God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We continue with our words from Jesus from the cross. Today we hear from John chapter 19, verse 28. After this, knowing that all was now finished, he said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. We dare not forget that Jesus is true man, besides being the son of God. As a man, Jesus wept at the death of his dear friend Lazarus. He sweated like great drops of blood right before the crucifixion in the garden, right before his uh, arrest. He walked from town to town. He even ate and drank, even with sinners, just like all the rest of humanity does. So it really should not surprise us that while he is hanging on the cross, he would say, I thirst. In one essence, this was to uh, fulfill what Scripture said of him. We remind ourselves with Psalm chapter 22, verse 15 says, My strength is dried up like a pot sheared, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. So, you know, if Jesus is then thirsty, nothing wrong with crying out, I thirst. And also, as the psalmist says in Psalm 69, verse 21, And for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. Was all this important? That Jesus would actually say the equivalent of two English words, I thirst? And the answer is yes. Why? Well, to fulfill the scriptures. To fulfill the law. Because we cannot. So that's why God takes on flesh and blood. That's why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's why Jesus goes to the cross to fulfill the law, to fulfill all righteousness so that we can have the forgiveness of sins and be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for eternity. But there is more to Jesus asking for a drink than just fulfilling the law. This wasn't the first time Jesus asked for a drink. You may remember this actually from last Sunday's gospel reading where we have the Samaritan woman at the well who found our Lord thirsting. And by the Lord thirsting, strangely enough, the woman at the well was filled. Let me just pick it up from John chapter 4 verse 10. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. As she was continuing to dialogue with this, the Holy Spirit was doing something within her. As she goes running back to the town and tells the other people in the town, could this be the Christ? So she believed and told others in the town. The result in verse 42 of chapter 4 of St. John, they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard our, for ourselves, we know, and we know that this indeed is the Savior of the world. People believe all because our Savior says, will you give me a drink? Or I thirst. Jesus would even say a little bit later in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 38 Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. For this actually happened, especially with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, while he was on the cross. In the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 34, you may remember. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. Jesus now thirsts for the sins of the whole world, which he received so that there would be a flood of living water for eternity for that whole world. A flood not to destroy the world as in the days of Noah, but a flood of living water to save the world. In John chapter 6, Jesus said, 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now you have the one who says, whoever believes in me shall never thirst, now thirsting from the cross. The gift of faith, as Jesus reminds us, means that we will never thirst again. Doesn't necessarily mean we won't drink water. Jesus is referring to, you could say, a spiritual thirsty that is only satisfied in our Lord and Savior Christ. Our Lord, we are satisfied. The gift given by the one who is now in need. So Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Yes, even Hosea the prophet reminds us in chapter 55, Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. This gift of God is given freely because Jesus pays the price. It is his blood shed on Calvary's cross so that we can have this beautiful free gift. Let me just pick up one more verse, the next verse from John chapter 19, verse 29. A jar full of sour, sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and had it and held it to his mouth. Again, fulfilling what scriptures kind of said ahead of time. From Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 33, their wine is a, the poison of serpents and the cruel venom of ass. It's interesting. What kind of branch did they use to put that wine upon Jesus' lips? Notice the hyssop branch. The same type of branch that was used in the initial Passover. From Exodus chapter 12, verse 22, the instructions that Moses gives to the people of Israel in celebrating the Passover was take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lentil and the two door posts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. So that when the angel of death saw the blood would pass over the house. It's interesting how all this comes together. And that same Passover of sorts with the angel of death passing over us. Why? Because not the blood of lambs, but the blood of the Lamb of God now cleanses us from sin. As he thirsted on the cross, we may be reminded, again with the hyssop, from Psalm chapter 51, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. From the, from the Passover to the cross, we are purged of our sin. We are clean because the Son of Man, the Son of God, from the cross fulfills all Scripture and says, I thirst. We come before our Lord and Savior today in a very fearful time in our world. When our world hesitates to go outside because of fear, because of a virus. And fair enough, we should be protecting ourselves from all those things. But yet, our Lord and Savior brings us comfort and peace during this time. He thirsts for you. And so we come before our Lord today, whether here in church, or for watching this online, we come before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we are thirsting for that comfort. We are thirsting for that peace. The forgiveness of sins, yes, won for us 
for, from Jesus on the cross now gives us peace in our daily lives. Peace that the world cannot give because the world does not know Jesus. Peace that only comes from God. Peace that says no matter what happens to you in this world, you are forgiven, you are a child of God, and you are given a place to be with Jesus in heaven above. So we can be at peace. Even though the world around us may be in turmoil, the world around us may be living in fear, but we don't need to live in fear because our Lord and Savior thirsted for our righteousness. And so we receive this gift of the forgiveness of sins. We come before our Lord to receive his very own body and blood to give us strength in this world. Why? We only have to go outside and we see the fear. We need that strength. Strength that only our Lord and Savior gives to us. Yes, from his side, from the one who thirsted, flowed both blood and water. That living water. So that you can be with God for eternity. So this day we come before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We confess our sins on the many times that we have forgotten about his strength from the many times we have ignored his word. And we say, Lord, feed me, strengthen me, give me your body and blood to sustain me in my daily life. And our Lord, who thirsts for your righteousness, out of him flows both blood and water. That river of living water for the forgiveness of our sins. Likewise, as we have been forgiven and we've been strengthened by God, out from us also will flow that streams of living water. As we show care and forgiveness to a world around us, to a world living in fear, we can say, how can I love you? How can I forgive you? How can I be there for you? Again, it only comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this day, we gather around his word, receive his sacrament, and we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of life and the gift of eternal life. Thank you for the rivers of living water. Thank you for being there where two or three are gathered in his name. He promises to be there. And so we celebrate the Lord's Supper this day as he asks us to, remembering that, yes, he gives us forgiveness of sins and eternal life in his holy name. Amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.